Hi, I wanted to create a video and talk with you about what's been unfolding for me and my thoughts, inspirations, wisdom as everything has been occurring with uh, the racial violence, with the George Floyd murder, with the aftermath and the call for accountability with the Black Lives Matter movement and how that impacts us and how we can be of impact as well. So I've been meaning to and wanting to reach out to you and just give you some of my thoughts. Uh, as a white woman of privilege, uh, perhaps like many of you, the George Floyd murder has brought things to a state where we can no longer sit idly by. And I've had a whole range of feelings and emotions about this. And that's not what I'm here to talk to you about. Um, a couple of realizations that I've had. So I did an open video that I posted on my Instagram and personal Facebook page on Tuesday after a Latina woman colleague who I love and respect had created a video and I felt like was really a calling forth and a calling out and saying, it's time for you uh, white women of privilege to come forward and use your voice and use your platform. And I, I really took it as a call to action and an inspiration uh, to do that. And I, so I did create this video that I put out there. And then I realized in the aftermath, there was all this intensity about, did I do it right? Am I going to get called out for not doing it right? And I realized that for me personally, the biggest obstacle I have for taking personal responsibility around cleaning my side of the street as it relates to my own indoctrination into white supremacy and the valuing of the white body as the standard, the biggest obstacle that I have for dealing with that is my inner judge and it is my inner expectation uh, that it has to that that it has to be right that i have to do it perfectly that it's this whole issue of the duality of is it right is it wrong and anytime i was really feeling strong reaction or feelings to being called out it was this feeling of being told I'm wrong or bad, which part of my deeper roots uh, of my core issue is around that not being lovable, not being enough, not being worthy, and uh, kind of going down that rabbit hole or that spiral, spiral of not being okay. And I'm not saying that as an excuse. I'm just saying it was so illuminating to recognize the power of that and how it was operating within me and really being the piece that was keeping me from moving forward in terms of tending to the race issue uh, in my life, in my experience. And there's two other big pieces that I want to share with you about this. One uh, was a realization I had this morning, which is that in many ways, we uh, white women and white men are like the favorite son or daughter of a very paternalistic uh, grandparent perhaps, or parent who both looks favorably upon us and we get benefit from their kindness and well-being towards us. And meanwhile, our black, indigenous, uh, 
fellow siblings of color are like the family scapegoat. And this paternalistic grandfather, father figure is how I see it in my own experience, is just cruel and mean and nasty. And because we have been getting the goodies of whether it's financial or blessings or paving the way from this uh, patriarchy in our collective family, we've just been kind of sitting there. And if you're anything like me, you have been enculturated into the good girl, like be the good girl. Like that's how you continue to get the blessings is by being the good girl, by not making waves, by not upsetting the apple cart. And this is really a call to our own liberation from that, from that very flawed system. I mean, the price that our black, indigenous, and brothers and sisters of color are paying is, is, is huge. And we are paying a price as well for staying in this system. It is injuring us. We, the, the privilege is, is, is not just a privilege. There's, there is a, a huge price that we pay, a price we pay in terms of our very own sovereignty our very own sovereignty, because here is the thing. We sacrifice, we sacrifice a piece of ourselves when we let, you know, when we let someone else be brutalized, it is a way that we are not fully loving and embracing ourselves. And to the extent that we have privilege, we also have power. And I don't know about you, but I have spent a good deal of my life disowning my power and being uncomfortable with my power. And I see that playing out in this response. And yes, it is, it is hard and it is ugly. And I am not saying I am hugely down the road with this, but I have found some wonderful resources that I am happy to share with you uh, that, that are making a difference in terms of my ability to lean into the inquiry as a white woman of privilege, to, to examine my privilege, but without going into the shame or the shutdown or the, I'm going to be the good girl and do the politically correct thing and, and say the right thing, even though on the inside I feel like pissed off about it or upset about it. And frankly, when it gets into this right or wrong, you're bad if you're not doing it this, this, and this way, it triggers that in me. And I mean no disrespect to the cause, but it... There is a knee-jerk reaction in me. And so I have to find a way of grace. I have to find a way where I can be loving and honoring of the other, but also loving and honoring of myself in terms of unshackling and uncoupling from this, from this black. <laughs> from this uh, patriarchal shackle, cage, whatever, enslavement, whatever you want to call it, enslavement and this giving over of my power just to have blessings, selling out uh, other human beings just to have this privilege. So I'm saying this in part in an effort to be accountable and to say I'm going to continue to do this work. And this is a, it's a permission giving, it's a welcoming, it's to say, it's, it's, it's an invitation to perhaps look at this from a different perspective for yourself as well as white women. And to those of you that are black, indigenous, and people of color, I, I welcome and I honor your leadership and I am saddened that it takes tragedy to sometimes call us out, that there is the ways that uh, the world needs us 
to stand in our leadership. And it can be so easy um, to be focused on whatever it is we're focused on and not do that. But tragic times call us to a different level and to a different state. And I am stepping into that for myself and I welcome and invite you to do that for yourself as well. Uh, again, and I'm happy, I will share those additional resources that I am finding useful to do this exploration and inquiry. All my love.